Hello my lovely people. I know I promised that the 500 sub special will be the next but because of some mental issues I wasn't able to write it. But instead of uploading nothing I decided to finish part 4 of Never Give Up. Hope you aren't mad about it. Now I stop babbling and let you enjoy part 4. Kiyomi's point of view. Kiyomi could see how it simulate, slept, and laughed less and less, but cried more and more, looked sad, and how the circles around his eyes became darker and darker. He hated to see the love of his life getting worse and worse. Atsumu tried to get Toru out of his head but the Argentinian satyr remained in his thoughts. The only thing that helped him was that Kiyomi didn't push him away. Kiyomi was always very understanding with him. If the raven-haired man would have been distant to him, it would have destroyed the blonde setter. But to see how Kiyomi was hurting because of his feelings was unbearable. That's why he started to close himself off. Instead of Kiyomi being distant it was Atsumo who couldn't handle the closeness of the other. Both knew that Atsumo needed time to sort his thoughts out. Kiyomi believed that Atsumo would come back to him. Atsumo knew that as long as he had Kiyomi by his side, he would be able to forget his feelings for Toro over time. The spiker stayed by Atsumo's side when the setter was at his lowest point in life. The two went through the worst and the best moments together. The two will make it through this crisis together, which is something they both firmly believe in and gave strength to both of them. Although Kiyomi was worried that Atsumo was distant to him, he knew he shouldn't pressure him. After talking to Iwajumi, Kiyomi began to think about whether he could handle being in a polyamorous relationship. He began searching the internet for information on polyamorous relationships and on how that could work. On the one hand, he didn't want to be in a relationship with Toru and Iwajumi because he didn't had feelings for them, but on the other hand, he wanted to see Itsumo happy again. He took his time making the decision. He knew he couldn't rush this decision if he didn't want to put his relationship in even greater danger. He knew if he agreed he couldn't back out again, and when he did he thought that it would ruin his relationship with Itsumo. For him it was very hard to make up his mind. The only person he could talk to was Komori, who hated it to see his cousin hurt so much. But it helped Kiyomi to get a hold of his feelings. The volleyball season ended and they were off for a month and a half. Atsumo began slowly to close the gap between them. The break didn't mean that they could relax. They needed to keep their bodies in shape, so Atsumo and Kiyomi went. Jogging together every day which helped them to feel closer again. They also went to the gym together. Since Itsuma wasn't allowed to do all the exercises because of his hand injury, he always went home earlier, while Kiyomi stayed longer for an hour. Some of the team also met occasionally to play comfortably together. They often brought their partner with them and they all played little matches. Together. Since they were too few that weekend, Sakusa asked if Komori, Akagi, and Suna wanted to come and Suna took Osamu with him. How is Tsumu holding up? Not good. He had a bad night and when I asked him if he wanted to come too he said no, even though he is allowed to play again. I don't know how I can help him. At least he stopped to shut me out. You did what you could everyone else would have. Left him. Tsumu needs to figure out what he wants now. Komori he knows what he wants, that's why he broke of all contact to Oikawa, even though it tore his heart apart. He hates himself more than ever, because he struggles to forget his feelings. You shouldn't be too hard on him, you know him. He loves Kiyomi and I know he wishes that he didn't had those feelings. Komori you know how afraid he is. To lose people he loves? I hate seeing him like that. He is in a similar condition than when our mother passed away. I know he misses Oikawa and I love him even more that he chooses me but it kills me to see him so destroyed. 
Osamu do you think he will regret choosing me or will he blame me someday that he lost Oikawa? Kiyomi looked very sad, the thought of that made him anxious. Osamu hesitated a second before placing a hand on Kiyomi's shoulder. The spiker looked up. Osamu made his best reassuring smile. I don't think he will blame you. He loves you more than everything. I think he just needs more time to get over his feelings. It's hard for him because Oikawa was his best friend. He isn't that sad because he can't be in a relationship with him, but because he lost his best friend. And maybe someday he will regret it but this, choosing you was his decision. And I think he would regret it more if he had lost you. Despite that, I don't understand how you can love more than one person at the same time, I know that he loves you more than everything else, I think he didn't shut you out on purpose. You know how he is when he is stuck in his head? I think you should go to him now, I think that too. He called me at night and told me he dreamed that he lost you because of his feelings. You're right I have to go home. I don't want him to shut me out again. See you guys later. Tell us how it went and give him a hug from me? Will do. He grabbed his bag and headed to his car. On the way home he got more and more anxious. Atsumu always loved being able to play with his brother, but he refused to go with them. This was a clear sign of how bad Atsumu was actually feeling. However, Kiyomi thought that Atsumu needed some space from him, so he left without him. However, the conversation with Osamu and Komura made him realize that the opposite was the case. Maybe if he knew about the dream he never would have left. As he entered the apartment, his heart broke at the sight in front of him. It was way worse than he thought. Atsumu sat on the floor with photo albums he made with Toru, gifts he got from Toru and other memories shared with his best friend. Kiyomi stood in the doorway for a moment and looked at the blonde until he heard sobs. He quickly walked over to Itsumo and knelt in front of him and took the album he had in his lap and pulled him into his arms. Oh, Omi? I thought you are at the gym with the others? I was but I wanted to be with you? And Osamu told me, you dreamed about losing me. So I got worried and wanted to hold you. It looked like the setter didn't notice his spiker coming home until he was wrapped in his arms. Atsumu clung to Kiyomi and buried his face in his partner's chest. The closeness of his partner calmed him down quickly. My love what happened? Please don't shut me out again. I need you and I miss my Atsu. I will be there for you and I will listen to you, even when you need to talk about Toro. Atsumu lifted his head and looked Kiyomi in the eye, who leaned forward and gave him a gentle kiss on the lips. Omi Omi I am so sorry for all of this. He pointed to the mess on the floor. I swear I am trying to forget him. I just can't, but I try so hard. It's okay, I know you are trying but I don't want you to forget him anymore. It is hurting you and I hate that. Last month was Iwajumi here and talked to me, he made me realize that it is possible to love more than one person at the same time. I understand now that you don't have to choose between me and Toro. I thought about what he said to me a lot and I want that we talk it out with Oikawa and Iwajumi. So we don't have to lose our best friends. I miss Hajimi and I don't want to lose him. No, I don't want that. If I stay friends with Toro I will never be able to get over my feelings. And if I can't get rid of my feelings it will destroy our relationship. You can stay with Iwajumi but I can't keep contact with them? It made the spiker happy to hear. Atsumu say that. The determination in the blonde's voice gave him confidence that no matter what will happen he won't lose the love of his life. Kiyomi loosened the embrace pushed Itsumo slightly away from him by the shoulder and looked him deeply in the eyes. He raised his hand and stroked the tears from his face. His hand remained on Itsumo's cheek. I know and I don't mean that we should be friends with them. 
I want to try if a polyamorous relationship would work for us. What are you talking about? How would that even work? You don't love Toro or Iwayjumi? It's just me and Toru who has feelings for each other. That would be unfair towards you and Iwayjumi. It will only hurt you too and eventually ruin our relationship. And I don't want that. I also don't want to come between Iwayjumi and Toro. That's not true. Iwayjumi confessed to me and I think he has feelings for you too. Well it is true that I don't love them but I don't have to be in a relationship with them. I think it would be best if we start that just you and Toro are in a relationship and we see if I can start loving them as well. Atsumo stood up and walked nervously through the apartment. Several times he wanted to say something. He always turned to Kiyomi and opened his mouth to speak but closed it and remained silent, then he started pacing again. Kiyomi saw that Atsuma needed time to think about it and therefore stayed silent and just watched him. After a while, Atsuma sat down next to Kiyomi. He took a few deep breaths before he spoke. Are you absolutely sure you are okay with that? I don't want to see you suffer because of it. You will never lose me. As long as I can see you smile again, it will be all right. Just promise me that if it is too hard for you, you will tell me and I will end it. I can't lose you. Okay I promise you. Let's go to sleep and tomorrow we will call them. Kiyomi stood up and held out his hand to Itsumo, who took it and stood up. The two walked hand in hand to the bed. Itsumo turned around in front of the bed and looked at Kiyomi. He put his right hand that was free around his lover's shoulder and pulled him into a deep kiss. The black-haired man put his free hand on Atsuma's hip and pulled him closer. He deepened the kiss and ran his tongue over Atsuma's lower lip, who opened his mouth slightly, allowing Kiyomi to slide his tongue into Atsuma's. Omi, I love you so much. Never ever forget that please. I won't. I love you too. My love? Kiyomi made a step to the bed and brought his beloved out of balance. They both fell on the bed and Kiyomi could hear something that he had not heard for weeks, Atsumomiya, the love of his life was giggling. The spiker rose a little to be able to see his setter better. When he saw the smile on his face, it brought a smile to his face as well. At that moment he knew he had made the right decision. He knew they will be all right. Kiyomi leaned forward and kissed the soft lips of his partner. Atsuma put one arm on his Omiomi's lower back, the other around his shoulder and placed his hand in the black curls. When he felt soft lips on his neck he let out a soft moan. Kiyomi looked up and looked at Atsuma in surprise. D, don't stop. Keep kissing me. He did as he was told and immediately kissed the neck again. The blonde ran his hand under the t-shirt and pulled it upwards. Kiyomi sat up and pulled the t-shirt the rest of the way over his head and tossed it aside. Atsumu also sat up and kissed his beloved on the chest, over the neck, until he reached the lips and the two lost themselves in. A deep passionate kiss. There will be a smut scene on my Instagram but it will take some time until it is up because I didn't even start writing it. At Sima's point of view, he knew Kiyomi could heal him but if there was a chance to keep Kiyomi and Toru in his life he would do everything to make it work. But he was determined to protect Kiyomi. If he noticed that it hurts Kiyomi he would put an end to it. What have I done to deserve you? For the first time in weeks his heart didn't feel so heavy anymore, it finally didn't feel like it was about to burst with pain. For the first time in weeks he didn't feel the distance that had formed between them. He was very afraid to get into a relationship with Toro because he didn't want to put his relationship with Kiyomi in danger but he also knew that the pain of being apart from his best friend would destroy him. Atsumo was the first one to wake up. He turned so that he could watch Kiyomi sleeping. He ran his hand over the back of his beloved, 
gently stroking the scratches he had made during the night. Baby you deserve so much more than me but I am too selfish to let you go, I will protect what we have no matter. What? That's a promise? No matter what will happen between me and Toru you will remain my number one. You will always be my number one too. Oh, Omi you are a, awake. H, how long? Since you started stroking my back. I was enjoying it. I missed your touches. Never ever stop touching me again. I hate it to fall asleep without you cuddling against me. Or waking up alone. I missed it too. I'm sorry. For being distant. I thought you might. Atsumo was interrupted when Kiyomi pressed his lips against his. After a long makeout session he pushed the blonde away, so he could look him in his golden eyes. I know. You don't have to explain. It's okay. You came back to me, and that's all I care about. I saw in the past few weeks how hard you were trying to lose your feelings and that made me happy. To know you would choose me over him. And I love you even more for it. But now it's time to leave all that behind us and move forward and focus on our future with Hajime and Oikawa. Atsumo knew he didn't need to give him an answer. He just pressed his face against the spiker's chest and embraced him tight. After half an hour of sweetest cuddling each other they finally got out of bed. They both got ready for the day. Atsumo sent a message to Tora that he wanted to talk to him. Private message between Tora and Sumo. Hey Tora can we talk about what happened in the restaurant? Yes? Where do you want to meet up with me? Can you and Iwajumi come to my apartment? You want that I take Iwachan with me? Yes Omi will be there too. He wants to talk to both of you too? No I don't. Think we can come. I think I know what you will say and me and Iwachan can't handle bad news. Just let us hope for a while longer. I can promise you don't know what it is about. I don't know if you will like what we have to say but I want you in my life. I miss you and I want to see if we can fix our friendship, if you want. But if you don't want me anymore I will accept that and leave you and... you me alone? No, I miss you too. We will be on our way as soon as we are ready. Iwachan has to drop something of at the gym and then we will be on our way. Good. You know the address? You still live with Sakusa in the apartment near your brother? Yes. What time do you think you will be here? Iwachan has to be at the gym at 1.30 p.m. I think we will be at yours at 2 p.m. Okay. See you later. I am looking forward to seeing you, and Sakusa too. Yeah me too. Atsumo put his phone aside and went to Kiyomi who was sitting on the couch. He gave him a gentle kiss and laid his head on his partner's shoulder. Are they coming? Yeah, but not for another two hours. Iwajumi has to drop something of at the gym and then they will be here around 2 p.m. Do you want to go for a run in the meantime? That's a good idea. In this way, the time will surely pass faster. Wanna run through the park? Let's run to the big tree and on our way back let's get something to eat. Good idea? It's been a while since we last had Samu's food. I miss his food. Then I will call him and let him prepare something for us. I will go change. Kiyomi disappeared into the bedroom while Itsumu got his phone and called his brother. When both of them wore their sports clothes and running shoes they went outside. They had to run 10 minutes through the city until they arrived at the nearest park. They jogged around a pond for 20 minutes until they came to a large tree. There they took a short break and looked out at the pond. I love this view. It always reminds me of our first run in this city. Me too. I will. Never forget when you got into a fight with Samu and he pushed you accidentally into the pond. Og, do you have to bring that up? Haha, <laughs> don't pout and let's go. Omi, what is it my love? Thank you. Atsumu kissed Kiyomi on the cheek and started jogging again. The spiker looked after the blonde for a second, 
then started jogging again and quickly went to the side of his lover. What were you thinking? Me for? For everything? For not leaving me, for keep loving me and for trying to share me? I would do anything for you? As long as I have you by my side I will always be happy. The two continued jogging until they arrived at Osamu's restaurant. Osamu was glad to see that they seemed to be good again. It made him happy to see that Atsumo was doing a lot better. The couple quickly grabbed their food and headed home. When they got home, they put the food in the kitchen and took a quick shower. After that they waited for Iwajumi and Toro to arrive. They didn't have to wait long before the doorbell rang. They went to the door together, and Itsumo opened it with a soft smile. As soon as the door was fully opened, Itsumo was pulled into a tight embrace. Oikawa we should talk first before you get all excited. But it is good to see both of you, are, right I. I am sorry Sakusa. And I'm glad we can at least talk about what happened. Toro let go of the embrace and immediately clung to Iwajumi. The former spiker just nodded at Kiyomi and Itsumu. Come in, we have a lot to talk about. Iwajumi and Toro took off their shoes and entered the apartment. Kiyomi signaled the two of them to sit on the couch. Itsumu sat down on one of the two chairs that they had placed opposite the couch. Kiyomi sat down in the other one next to his beloved. Both couples helped the hand of their partner. I thought a lot about what you said Iwajumi. I see how sad Itsu is and how much he misses Oikawa. I think we have to talk about how you two can still be together without me being jealous all the time. And we need to talk about the fact that you Oikawa and Iwajumi both are in love with my boyfriend. We have to find a way how I can love Toro without hurting my Omi. We reached the end of part 4. I hope the next story I will upload will be the 500 sub special. I know it is late, we already are near 600. It will probably be one longer video or two shorter ones. I hope you liked it. I have an Instagram account where I will make updates and where I will upload smut scenes. Omis underscore it's a 99. Join my Discord server, I'm occasionally in the voice channel. If I am in the voice channel I will announce it on Insta. Link is in the description. I apologize for the grammatical errors. Write me a comment how you liked the story. Don't forget to follow. If someone wants a video, please let me know it. I will try to write your ideas as best as possible.